Welcome to the celebration of the first Sunday of Advent at All Saints Parish, the beginning of a new liturgical year. We invite you as you watch this recorded Mass to participate as fully as you are able, to kneel if possible, to stand where appropriate, and certainly to fully acclaim the responses. We also encourage you to perhaps light a candle. This is the season of light, and we ask you to light a candle to remind us all of the light of Christ and that we are all called to be the light of Christ for each other. Thank you for joining us. Mass here at All Saints Parish. As you know, the obligation to attend Mass has been dropped until further notice, so I'm glad you're watching this wherever you may be. As you may know, probably know, there are two Masses on the weekend, one at 4 o'clock on Saturday at St. Joseph Church and one at 10.30 on Sunday at St. Anthony Church. And we ask you to be very careful because the virus is getting worse all the time and stay safe, stay separated, and please wear a mask. Also, we will have daily masses on, our weekday masses on Tuesday and Thursday at nine o'clock here at St. Anthony Church. And so you might be better spaced to be safe at those masses if you're free at that time. Please pray for all of us that we may stay safe. Pray for those affected by the coronavirus and their families, especially for those who have died and all those families and help us all get through this in your grace and your peace. On this first Sunday of Advent, we bless the Advent wreath. Let us pray. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the first candle of this wreath. May its light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Assisting us this morning is Tina Schutte, our musician. Emma Jean Elpers will be the doing the reading, and she's here with her husband, Rich, and Mike Wathen will be our cameraman, and Peggy Epley and Amy Eager will be putting it on whatever so that you can view it.
wherever you may be. So thank you all for your assistance this morning. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Lord comes to each of us in different ways. Let's just take a moment to reflect on how God comes to us in our life. Lord God, we believe that you are coming to us many, many times through our life in many different ways. Sometimes we're aware, sometimes we're not. Sometimes we let you in, sometimes we fail. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet Christ with righteous deeds, so that, gathered at his right hand, we may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. If you have your Bibles handy, I would suggest that you take it out and open to the book of the prophet Isaiah. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 63, beginning with verse 16b, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 16. And in this part of Isaiah's, the, the reading from Isaiah, or the gospel, the, the book of Isaiah, the people of Israel have finally been released from bondage, from being hostages in Babylon, and have come back with great hope to Jerusalem, to their hometown, and to their homes. Now, they're greatly disappointed, however, when they get there because they find that their homes have been, and their fields too, have been pillaged and destroyed, and the temple has been torn down. And so they're greatly disappointed, and they ask God to tear open the heavens and come back down and fix things. It's, one, it's part of a cycle, really, that happens many times in the scripture where God's people have forgotten what God said, they begin to treat one another badly, and the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and the whole thing, and it goes on for years and years and years and years and years until finally God sends some punishment like taking them as exiles into Babylon. Then they say, uh-oh, maybe we did something wrong. Maybe we weren't listening to God. And so then they reform gradually, and then they're freed again, and the cycle starts over again. So we can see where we place ourselves in that cycle as well. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and harden our heart so that we do not fear you? Turn back for the sake of your servants, for the sake of the tribes that are your heritage. Your holy people took possession for a little while, but now our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. We have long been like those whom you do not rule, like those not called by your name. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood 
and the fire causes water to boil. To make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourselves, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. to you, let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you, let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, let us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. The next reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, 
verse 3. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He may also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 13, beginning with verse 33. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 33. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. We've been reading Matthew for so long, I forgot. We changed to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this first Sunday of Advent, we are told to stay awake, to be ready, lest the Master come when we do not expect. He speaks of the doorman. We don't too often have a doorman here in our culture, in our time. But I remember when we met the doorman in Innsbruck at the Canisianum where we lived. We had gone over for four years of study of theology. We took a ship over, landed at Le Havre, took a boat train to Paris. We were due to go to Innsbruck and be there at a certain time. But we thought, we're in Paris. (laughs) When are we going to get back to Paris again? We might as well take a little time to look around and see what the city has to offer. And so we delayed probably about three days 
before we took another train into Innsbruck. And we went to this house where we live called, called the Kinesianum, named after St. Peter Kinesius. And we went into the front door, and there was an inner door, which was locked. And in between, there was a wall on the left, and in that wall was a little window with an opening, and there sat the Fortner, the doorkeeper. He'd been expecting us for some time. He asked us who we were. We told him our names, and he said, Endlich, which I knew enough German to realize meant finally we had arrived. Well, as I remember, we got into no trouble before, because of that, fortunately. And there we were for four years. And we were always passing by the Portner, the doorkeeper, and he was always on the watch, except at night. So today we are told to stay awake like that Portner, like that doorkeeper. It's like, for many people, that's a scary thought because we think God's coming back and he's going to catch us at some of our misdeeds or all of our misdeeds because he knows them all. But hopefully for us Christians who are trying to do what God wants us to do, we have another attitude, and that's celebration, expectation. We're looking forward to God coming back because we will celebrate our collective victories for the rest of time. In the meantime, we're usually asking God to come back and fix things. In the first reading, we heard from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the people were disappointed and they yelled at God and said, come back down here, tear open the heavens and come back and fix stuff. Well, God did. He tore open the heavens and came down and we call him Jesus. And when Jesus grew up, he taught us how to live, how to deal with one another, how to act justly, how to act with charity, how to act with love. And then he left and said, okay guys, it's all yours, carry on, do what I did. And there's the rub, because instead of us waiting for God to do his thing, Maybe God is waiting for us to do his thing. Stay awake. Be ready. Now we can't really stay awake all the time. I'm sorry, Jesus, but physically we can't stay awake all the time. Emotionally we can't stay awake all the time. Spiritually we can't stay awake all the time. And so Father Richard Rollheiser suggests that we have an alarm clock set for various times during the day so we wake up and connect with Jesus again, at maybe in the morning at prayer, at night prayer, throughout the day at meal prayer, at other times during the day when we're talking to Jesus. And we're talking in our own words, not with a bunch of prayers we've learned or memorized or read, but in our own words so we pay attention to what we're saying. And then we're trying to listen to what God has to tell us, to go back into our depths to see where we have gone astray, how we can straighten things out, how we can hear his message more clearly, how, he can do, how we can do the job that he has lined up for us so that one day we can all celebrate together when he returns for the final time. So let's just take a few moments to think, to pray, and ask God to help us wake up at the proper times and reflect and hear what God has to tell us.
we believe that God is waiting for us to wake up and be about our work, his work on this earth. Let's profess that faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. For our church, attune our minds and hearts to the movement of your spirit, so that by the gift of faith, your will and vision will take root in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Bless our nation as we make our way through this crisis and that we may come out of it more united and stronger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from violence, famine, persecution, or neglect, free them from the bonds that hold them and open the doors of mercy and compassion for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that we may find time and space this Advent for quiet contemplation and be led into deeper communion with you, Lord God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace in our war-torn areas of our world, may God guide and inspire all who are working for this peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially those whose names on our list of intentions, may they find strength, hope, and comfort in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Rita Friedenberg, and those listed in our book of intentions, receive them into your presence and console those who mourn their loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. Help us accept your answer to our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as we give thanks for all the gifts that God has given us, we take some of those gifts and return them back to him.
Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For at his first coming, he assumed the lowliness of our human flesh, and so, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, so that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for the great promise in which we now dare to hope, and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sitting down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, Father, forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory, glory are yours. Now and now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us safely exchange some sign of peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but, but only say, say the, the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed.
says the Lord, for I am God. There is no other, none beside me. I call your name. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.